OG is on fire. He is hitting everything. He is hitting every shot. He is hitting shots off the dribble. Step back off the dribble over a defender. It's not just catch and shoot anymore. He is creating his own shot on all three levels of the court. So the next thing we're going to do, I have a tier list. We're going to rank the Raptors based on their preseason performances, how they performed in preseason. So did they meet expectations? Did they go above? Did they go really above expectations? Or the other side, were they under the expectations or extremely under? This is going to be subjective to what I think. It is based off of what I expected of the player. I'm going to convey what my expectation of the player was. And I'm going to convey how I felt they performed in preseason. This is going to be mostly about the games they played, partially about the way they've conducted themselves in media and whatnot, and how, my perception of the player. Uh, there's also a category called straight up not good because in regards to my expectations, you were just really, really bad at basketball for some reason. And that's, to be honest, was made for Freddie Gillespie. So we're going to put him there. The DNP categories, obviously, they did not play. I can't rank them if they did not play in preseason. So let's go in order, the order that we have here, and see what they did in preseason. So Sam Decker's an interesting one. We've talked about him already on the show today. And other than the one quarter, I just don't think he did, like, anything really, you know? It was just one quarter against the Wizards that made him look really good. And props to him for having that one really good quarter. But, like, what has he really done? So, for that one game, I'm going to... I would say he's slightly under. Because I would expect him to do, I guess, a little bit more. Maybe he didn't meet my expectations. But it was just the... It was, it was, it was literally just the one game that he played well in. So I'm going to say slightly under for Sam Decker. But truthfully, there wasn't really a, a lot of a sample size to decide on that. Siakam did not play. That's easy. I think for Fred Van Vliet, I could say slightly underwhelmed. I think there was one good performance. So I think, I think I'm think i going to put Fred in the Met expectations. Fred is supposed to step up as a leader. And he had a couple, you know, one of the bad games. He did have a really good game as well. So... Uh, I see that he's developing as a point guard, which is what I wanted to see. He's trying the floater uh, not as much as I wanted him to. The shooting has been a little bit better. So I'm going to put Fred Van Vliet in the Met Expectations category. I think that that's fair. I could even put him in slightly under. All right, next person up is OG Ananobi. There's no other way to put this. I was saying like a week ago, we're not going to see the OG MIP season because his last season, his previous season was so... Like, not so good, but, like, it was so good that it'd be hard for him to really get that much better. He averaged 15.9 points per game on 48% from the field shooting, 40% from three. He'd have to have, like, a Brandon Ingram MIP season type of jump, which I didn't think he was capable of until I saw him in preseason. OG is on fire. He is hitting everything. He is hitting every shot, seemingly. He is hitting shots off the dribble, step back off the dribble, over a defender it's not just catch and shoot anymore he is creating his own shot on all three levels of the court he's taking the mid-range shots when they're open he's getting to the rim he's blowing by people to get to the rim he's finishing with authority and with precision not to mention the fact that he's already one of the best if not the best on ball defenders in the nba og was wildly beyond the expectations i had for him his ball handling and his dribbling is getting so much better i can't believe we are paying him 72 million over four years that's crazy that is going to be the best contract in the nba or near it in the next few years that's crazy that we got him on that much money chris boucher did not play see me look another one wow I thought this guy was just like a pretty good shooter. He's a really good shooter. And he's so much more. He ball handles in the fast break. He can create his own shot on the perimeter. He can create his own shot in the interior. I didn't think he'd have the layup package that he possesses. I guess I didn't watch enough of him because I don't watch Detroit or OKC. 
But man, he is good. And he is going to take somebody's job away because he he's playing to insert himself in that first 10 in the rotation. He is playing like that. And truthfully, he's been playing a lot better than Gary Trent Jr., who looked really bad in preseason. I'm going to be honest. I made a video defending him and saying that, yo, I'm not giving up on him. But it's, you know, we're holding our guys accountable. And we are going to hold Gary Trent Jr. accountable here because he shot very poorly. And when he shot poorly, did he, did he stop shooting? Shoot or shoot. Shoot yourself out of the rut. But he didn't do that either. He kept shooting. He kept missing. His three-pointers were not on. He struggled to get to the rim, which I really wanted him to improve. I really wanted him. I mean, what I wanted to see from Gary Trent from this offseason was... Is his, his decision-making getting better in shot selection? And is he getting to the rim more often? And from preseason, the answer to both of those questions is no. I don't see him getting to the rim enough. And from three, his shooting hasn't sharpened up and his decision-making on shooting has not improved. I am pretty upset with that. I'm not giving up on him. There's still a whole season for him to prove me wrong. But based off of preseason, he wasn't that good. He wasn't that good. Isaac Bonga next. I mean, I'm going to say slightly under. There wasn't really enough of a sample size, but I was hoping he'd have more of an effect on offense, which he didn't. And the only real reason he's still with the team is that he's 22 and there's room to grow. I mean, he's already really tall and he's athletic. That's also part of it. He's a guy who's like six foot eight and can play as a point guard. So that's mostly part of it as well, you know? Sweet me hi Luke. I mean, I'm gonna agree. With, I mean, for chats talking about Utah, I think that Utah Watanabe for me moderately exceeded expectations. I expect him to come back similar to what he was last season. He was a little bit better. I think Sfi is gonna take his job, absolutely. But for Utah, I feel like he has become a little bit more aggressive in getting you know on the interior rather than just staying on the outside. I think that. The best thing about his defense is his IQ on defense, the stuff off the ball that you don't necessarily see. And, you know, if I had like some, I don't have the clips to do it, but I could do like a breakdown on his defense and show why he's so talented, the way he cuts off passing lanes, the way he rotates, the way he sees danger. You know, it's almost like his presence just doesn't let his check get the ball. So he doesn't have to do that one-on-one -on -one defending as often because he's so smart there. I think that Sfi is going to take his job as that, you know, bench sort of shooter because Sfi has been better than Utah. But Utah, to me, has exceeded expectations. Uh, Reggie Perry, I don't really know. Like, I guess he met expectations because I genuinely had none and I knew he was here to make up the numbers and not make the team. Um, good luck to him in the, the 905. Um, I hope that's where he goes. And I hope he gets better with our G League team. But I really don't have anything to say. <laughs> you know, Precious Achua, oh my goodness. He is so much better than advertised. Not only is his three-point game very prominent, he can run the floor as the ball handler, and he can run the floor as, you know, just getting it into the court. Plays very well in transition, can definitely get his rebounds. The one thing I would say is he's not very good at guarding, like, true bigs, but that will come. He's very good at creating his own shot on the perimeter or on the interior. This is like not what I was expecting this player. He has looked so good. And I think he should be the starting center from day one. I think he took Ken Burch's job with his preseason. Fantastic. Malachi Flynn next. I'm, I was hoping for a lot better, man. I was hoping Malachi would take a step up after a good summer league where he was dominant. I thought he would take a step up. He had his struggles. He had his struggles. In the fourth preseason game, the, the second last, he had a good fourth quarter, but wasn't great other than that. And the same goes against the Wizards. He had a really good fourth quarter, much like Decker, but there wasn't like a, like a whole lot of consistency, which was very annoying. His shot is still a little bit broken. Uh, not his form or anything, but he just doesn't make enough. He just doesn't make enough. And I thought he would be getting better. And it seems like he's sort of in the same position he was last season, unfortunately. Um, so I got to put him there. Next one is Goran Dragic. He's also slightly underwhelming. Ooh, not extremely under. He's also slightly underwhelming. I, I felt that for Goran, you know, I wanted him to just average like 12 and 7. But he wasn't hitting his shots until, until the last game against the Wizards where he shot well. 
Other than that, I think he was underwhelming. His shot wasn't there. He wasn't creating as much and just wasn't as involved. And he's on a new team, so I'm willing to forgive that. He doesn't know the guys as well. I'm willing to forgive all of this, by the way. If I'm, I'm roasting anybody, I'm willing to forgive everything. It's preseason. I'm just saying how it is. And how it is is Goran Dragic underperformed. I don't think that's any secret for Raptors fans. Uh, Kem Birch didn't play a lot, but I'd say... Oh, I'm going to put him at Met just because I think that his interior game needs sharpening, but it's not his fault. He's coming off a pretty bad case of COVID. I'm, I'm going to forgive all of that for sure. Um, the one thing I could moderately exceed expectations is that, you know, we hit a corner three, and I'm excited to see how his three point develops. But I think he was as advertised. He was Ken Birch in preseason. Justin Champagny blew me away in preseason. He, I thought he had no chance of making this roster. He may have played himself into a rotation spot. He's knocking down threes. He's playing good defense. He's working in transition. He fits exactly what we're building with this team very well. Champagne is playing great, great basketball. And I think that he has definitely deserved a spot with the NBA team. I don't. I think he's too good to send down to the G League at this point. He's on a two-way, so they can. He could do double duty. Maybe it's more worth it to get more play time there. But I can see him legitimately contributing with the NBA team. Scotty Barnes definitely exceeded expectations. I think, I'd, I'd say moderately, because he played really well. He fit the game really well. Uh, would have liked that the three-pointer was a little bit better to get to extremely exceeded expectations, but his influence on the game is, is fantastic. You know, you can look at this, just a simple box score, which was already pretty impressive for Scotty Barnes, but you can also watch the game and see how much of an influence he has on the way the team plays, uh, whether it be just from his basketball skill or from the intangibles. So he looks the, like the real deal, NBA ready. I'm so excited for him to play for the Raptors. Next one is Ishmael Wainwright, unfortunate soul. He got cut. He met expectations, to be honest. He was what I wanted. Great defender, can hit his outside shots, not really do much else, but that was what I expected, and I think that was good enough to make the roster over Decker. But the team went another direction, and I'm not going to fault them for that. But I have seriously felt like, ugh, damn, thought Ishmael Wainer was good enough. Uh, next one is David Johnson, bro. I was expecting some sort of serviceable player here. Yikes. He looked bad. It's only a rookie. So he's got plenty of time to get better. He's going to be a key player on the 905. He's going to get better. But from what I saw in preseason, yikes. Yikes. He needs to get better ASAP. Delano Banton next. Ooh, I could say extremely. I'm going to say moderately because the jump shot isn't there. But Delano Banton for me was surprising in how much he could affect a game. I didn't think he would make this have any chance of making the team. But to be honest, he, he might have taken Malachi Flynn's job. I don't think he did. There's a possibility that on day one, Delano Banton has Malachi Flynn's supposed backup job because Delano Banton, I think, outperformed Malachi Flynn in four out of five of the games in preseason. Flynn looked good against the Wizards. But other than that, Delano Banton has looked solid. But I think it would be better for him to play with a 905 and really develop his game to the next level before he gets his NBA minutes. So there you have it. There you have it. That's what I think of the Raptors preseason performances based on my expectations and my perception of how they played. You get it? It's my opinion. So don't freak out. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments. But be, you know, nice.